Hello YouTube, this is Insane Monster, and we are here for part one of What If Naruto Had Under Night Sans's Powers. Now then, if you haven't watched part zero, I recommend you go do that. Also, at the end of the video, there will be links that will show you the beginning parts of all my what ifs. So, if you haven't seen the what ifs that I do have, check those out at the end of the video. And if you're looking for merch, go into the description down below and all that. But with all that said, before we get into the story, like always, I do hope you will enjoy. And now, hit it. Now then, as we return to Naruto, who is currently eating a uh, rice ball. As for what's in the rice ball, don't ask. Just don't. The, the Ma Grand Toad made it, so just don't ask. As he's eating it, Jiraiya jumps in front of him, stating that they're leaving. Confused, Naruto asked where are they going. As Jiraiya states that they're going to the Hidden Leaf. Because, for one, it's time for Naruto to take the ninja entrance, well, the ninja getting exam. If he passes, he'll be given the right to be a getting, which means he would be able to go on actual missions now. Raya has been very careful with his training and not reveal the things that he can do. Figuring that there's some sort of weird Keke Genkai that's mixing with his uh, Uzumaki bloodline. As he's seen his eyes with the white of them turning black and his normally blue eyes turning purple. As well as... A mark of a crescent moon appearing on his face whenever he uses some powerful attacks. Though we always figured that Naruto wasn't really showing them anything. Well, everything, you know? This being my reasoning due to the fact that in the actual anime, Naruto made the Russian Shuriken in complete secret at Mount Miyamboku. And that thing, that thing was some serious power so if he can hide that from the people who's training him i don't see why why not as he fills him in that he's already talked it over with the uh, lord third that he'll be moving back into the apartment that he was living in before coming to mount miyaboku as he takes a breath in and is a bit nervous about returning there, since he didn't have the fondest memories of the villagers and how they treated him, though at least now he knows why. So, he agreed. As they undid the reverse sealing, well, the reverse summoning jutsu to bring them both back to the leaf. Afterwards, they, be, they walked up through the gates, Naruto wearing his new orange-starred jacket that seems to be magical, considering it seems to resize itself to his growth. As Anne states, well, of course it is. What do you... <laughs> it's not a normal coat. As he did have it somewhat tailored on the inside to hold some things for ninja tools and such. As they go through the gates, the guards there notice Jiraiya and a blonde kid. As Jiraiya tells Naruto to head over to the ninja school while he goes fills in Lord Third. 
and gets the key to Naruto's uh, living space. With Jiraiya disappearing, Naruto is a bit nervous, wondering what exactly he should do. And are they actually expecting him? He hears Sans' voice in the back of his mind stating, Come on, you're just going there to take a test to, to get the headband so that you can go on missions, right? It won't be that difficult, will it? Naruto just sighs and thanks, telling Sans that, yeah, Uncle did train me pretty well. Though, from what Mom and Pa said about Jiraiya and his missions, I have some suspicions that uh, he's stopping someplace else before meeting Lord Third. As he was correct, as Jiraiya was doing his quote unquote research for his next book. Eh, as uh, Naruto gets to the school, Aruka ends up seeing Naruto. As he was told to wait for him at the entrance of the school. As he guides Naruto, Aruka looks back, seeing him. As Aruka states, it looks like you've grown quite a bit. Naruto does remember him from early on in his uh, early years and such, stating, it has been a while, hasn't it? Smirking at him. As Aruka doesn't sense any form of anger or anything towards him. Naruto kinda let that go a long time ago. So there is a small bit of uh, caution due to his past. He's going to try his best not to let that hold him back. Or at least try his best not to let it be a big factor in his life for now. As Aruka enters the classroom with Naruto falling behind, he introduces a student that will be shortly joining them to take the Genin exam. As he gestures to Naruto to, en to well, introduce himself. He introduces himself as Naruto Uzumaki. There's a few of them that recognize them. One being Shikamaru, who, when Naruto was young, asked his dad why the village treated Naruto so badly and his father did mention that it wasn't anything that Naruto actually did and it wasn't something Naruto could control. Shikamaru didn't really understand it but he was confused when suddenly Naruto just disappeared. As Naruto introduced himself as Naruto Uzumaki and all that, there were some others that did recognize him, like Sasuke and even Hanata, who Naruto did help her with some bullies before leaving. As Naruto was asked to take a seat next to uh, Sasuke, which was left vacant due to the constant fights between the girls about sitting next to Sasuke, so Aruka stated if the girls aren't gonna be civil about this then no one's none of them are gonna sit next to him which in my opinion was probably the for the best after sitting down aruka explained how the uh exam was going to go they go through some simple skills and such as well as some basic knowledge there was some things that naruto wasn't that good at one of them being Genjutsu, so there is that. As they do take a written test, as well as a practical test, Naruto did well in the written test. Since the influence of Sans' soul bonding to his did make him a bit smarter. And he wasn't going to pick a fight with Sasuke or stare him down. As for the exam portion for the practical part, 
Naruto went stepping up for the transformation due to he uh, used his perv due to to cause Aruga to nosebleed rocket himself into the ceiling yelling at Naruto saying what was that Naruto laughed stating well it threw you off right I I figured out that uh, that technique has a habit of working on people to the as a good distraction leaves them wide open either that or they just nosebleed themselves into unconsciousness or partial unconsciousness like you as Aruka was about to scold him he just realized he's actually kind of right I almost did pass out oh. all right Naruto I suppose you have a point there, but do not do that in public. Ever! Again! As... Uh, as Naruto just raises his hand, saying that it's okay, it's okay. Besides, if you see anybody else trying that, I'm pretty sure you'll know that they're just impostas. As inside the mental landscape, we just see Karama just staring down at Sans, stating, You did this! I already had to deal with one of you, now there's two! As Sans is just laughing with tears coming down his eyes, stating, I'm so proud! As now it comes to the clone jutsu, as Early on, Jiraiya noticed that the clone jutsu wasn't working with Naruto, or at least the normal one, due to the fact that they it isn't that they uh, he didn't have enough chakra, it's just that, well, to be more exact, it, it was the equivalent of trying to shove a inflated basketball into the opening of a faucet hole like in your kitchen and such. It just was not going. So, the his normal clones ended up looking the way they did because they were overcooked, in a manner of speaking. So, he taught him the, clone, the saddle clone jutsu, which Naruto used to make a couple of clones, impressing Iruka and Minato. Uh, sorry, I mean Mizuki. I do apologize. There is a lot of characters names in this show to remember. Either way, Mizuki was impressed. As he thinks, now might be the time. As later that day, after Naruto got his headband, as well as the other students, he was pretty excited. And at the end of the day, when it was night, he just sat up on the roof of the building he lived on, looking at the stars, thinking, man, the sky is a lot harder to see all the stars here, huh, in Mount Miyaboku. Eh, I wonder how often I can go there to go stargazing. Hmm. As in the mindscape, Sans is just chilling out looking through Naruto's eyes as he smirks about seeing the stars even if it's a bit less in the village that they can see this is when Naruto overhears some some uh, other ninjas being some tuning or panicking because the sacred scroll was stolen as Naruto teleports closer to them, overhearing their conversation, they hear that someone stole it. So Naruto, teleporting to higher ground, tried to use his chakra sensing slash uh, soul sensing that he got from some help from Sans in order for him to learn how to do. He sensed a soul that was moving pretty fast away from the village and in a panic as when he noticed he marked it in a turn 
in that kind of sense. More or less, he senses the panicking soul and teleported to it. Teleporting close to Mizuki. Looking that he had the scroll, he told him to stop. As he looked at Naruto, stating, Oh, what? What are you going to do? Huh? Honestly, do you even care about this village? Why not come with me? I think my boss would more than accept you. As he's thinking, come on, come on, kid. This village treated you so badly, and you ended up living somewhere else. Under, under the guard of one of the higher ups of the leaf, right? That's the only explanation for, for Jin Churiki to be just missing from the village. Oh, come on, Sir Orochimaru would love to get his hands on you. As Naruto looks at him, yelling, No, you're going to give that scroll back, and I'm taking you to the others. As he states, Honestly, do you even know why the village hates you? Why everyone just despises you, looks at you with such contempt? Well, here's a news flash. It's all because of the Nine Tail. Yeah, that's right. It's sealed inside you. You're nothing more than the demon fox himself to this village. As Mizuki, he is thinking about what else to say to have Naruto more convinced of coming with him to be used by Orochimaru as a tool. As Naruto just looked at him funny, stating, I already knew that. As he's just shocked, wondering, who told him? As Naruto thinks, honestly, I actually know, know more about the Nine Tails than you do. And he didn't actually have a choice in it. As he, Mizuki then snapped out of it saying, wait, he? Who he? What, what are you talking about? As Naruto blade flaring up his purple eyes and revealing his crescent moon mark, one of my partner, my friends, Arama, as the skeleton draconic nine-tailed fox appears behind him, at, as Minato states, you're a monster. What are you? What kind of monster can do this? As Naruto flares up his purple soul nine fox tails as he states, Don't you dare call him a monster! Firing off his tails, he grabs Mizuki and just ragdolls him, tossing him around as the skeleton a uh, nine, draconic nine tails skeleton that Karama is controlling runs straight towards him as Mizuki is thrown into the air. The skeleton Karama flips, slamming his tails to, onto Mizuki, embedding him into the ground. As Naruto uses his tails to grab the scroll, stating, I got it! With Mizuki stating, I see, you rely on that monster. You can't do anything for yourself, can you? As Kurama growls at him, about to blast him using his blaster skull head, as Naruto asks him to leave him to me. Kurama, seeing the anger in Naruto's eyes, states, Go for it. As Karama's skeleton body disappears, waiting to see what Naruto does to this guy. Naruto uh, puts away his nine purple magic fox tails as Mizuki crawls his way out of the ground. About to, as he states as he's getting ready to attack, I am going to kill you. 
Naruto putting his hands in the symbol for the Shadow Clone Juju, stating, Just try it. Creating an army of Shadow Clones as he just goes full on on this man, beating him senseless, leaving nothing but a pulp. As he ties up Mizuki, as well as puts the scroll on him, he drags Mizuki over to the Okage's office. As Jiraiya has been looking for Naruto since he went to go check on him, finding him missing, he just sees Mizuki and Naruto with the scroll. As Naruto tells him what happened, Jiraiya looks down on him, stating, Jeez, kid, you really kicked the cr- You really beat him senseless. He's still alive, isn't he? As Mizuki groans, it. Which he was trying to say, My feathers! But his face was so swollen that he couldn't actually speak properly. Darius, they tell good. Good, he's still alive. Still, kid. Well, either way, I now have something to report to Lord Third. As he takes Mizuki and the scroll, tossing them at well, handing the scroll over to the third while tossing Mizuki at his feet, as he was sentenced to be imprisoned for the crimes of treason. So he wonders why he did it, and if he was working for someone. After Jiraiya gave him some information, he knew that, uh, well, that uh, Naruto apparently was the one who caught him. As he smirks, looks at Jiraiya, stating, It looks like you did fine work with him. So, what exactly can he do? As Jiraiya states, Well, I know most of what he can do. And he's trained pretty good in using a bow staff and other kinds of staff weapons. But, I always feel like he's more or less hiding his capability. But that isn't really that uncommon for ninjas, now is it? As Lord Third smirks, stating, I suppose it is quite common. As they go in to put the scroll away and add some added security, including a ninja shield on the box they were storing in it as an extra precaution so it doesn't get stolen again or at least make it harder. After that, Naruto got up the next day and started wandering around. As he had his headband in his pocket not wanting it to get dirty until he actually met his new sensei and such. Plus he actually had the go meet with Lord Third, because like in canon, he had to get face paint on him to make a ridiculous face for his uh, ninja picture, as Jiraiya, after seeing this, just couldn't stop laughing, with Lord Third yelling at him saying, this is serious, this is shows the ninja that people will be hiring. How are we supposed to put this as his ID picture? Would Jiraiya just keep laughing, saying, Oh, oh, my sides, my sides, oh, it hurts so much. With Lord Third getting a bit of a twitch in his eye, being somewhat annoyed. As Naruto comes in, and we have the same deal as in canon, which results in Konohamaru bursting in going to attack Lord Third. As this fails horrifically, with him tripping on his own scarf, which is honestly ridiculously long for him, you know? As this kind of escalates with the, well, this guy is really just kind of a, I think he's more of a joke character. 
If you know who I'm talking about, it's the guy with the circle shades that keeps acting like he's better than, uh, well, or at least more superior. As Naruto has enough of this and uses his perv transformation jutsu, you know, the sexy jutsu, and causes Lord Third and the glasses guy to rocket themselves with nosebleeds as Daraya is yelling, all right, giving a thumbs up. With Lord Third smacking Daraya on the back of the head saying, you condone this? And Naruto is allowed to leave while Lord Third is just chewing out Jiraiya. As he leaves, Konoharu follows Naruto. As Naruto looks back, seeing just a odd box that is horribly painted and shaped, trying to be a rock. As Konohamaru states, oh, so you see through my disguise, don't you? As he bursts out, and things go pretty similar as in canon. As Konohamaru states Naruto to be his rival, as well as his teacher, to show him how to do that jutsu that made his grandfather uh, lose his composure. Yelling that he's never been able to do that to his grandfather, and he wants to do it so badly to get the upper hand on him. As Naruto, like in canon, does teach him it, though with repeated failure. As well as Naruto getting bonked on the head. Dating, why me? With Konohamaru being somewhat upset that he isn't treated like everyone else just because of his grandfather. That it just feels kind of lonely to him. As Naruto bonks him on the head, Konohamaru stating, What are you doing? Why did you do that? But Naruto look at him stating, Well, if you want to be treated like everyone else, you gotta learn how to take your lumps, too. Got it? Life's not just gonna hand you things on a silver platter. So, you gotta make... So if you want something, then you gotta make it happen. Alright? Looking at him as... Hamaru is looking at Naruto and smirking, saying, You got it, big bro! Causing Naruto to be confused, stating, Wait, big bro? What? As things wrap up, quite nicely. All the squads are decided after Naruto gets a proper picture for his ninja ID with Sasuke, Naruto, and Sakura being paired up. Sasuke could sense something was up with Naruto, but wasn't going to push it that much since he knew that Naruto existed and that he was somewhat a well, basically alone, like he was after the incident. And figured he must have been out of the village training with someone. Though, since they were on the same team, he'd get to see what he can do close up. Though, as they were assigned and everything, they were told that they'd be meeting their new senseis on another day, as they were given a schedule to when to meet. As this happened after all of the uh, senseis were given their teams, as Kakashi was looking at his team, looking them over, Jiraiya popped up next to him, saying hello. As Kakashi bowed down bowed to him slightly, to welcome back one of the signing of the leaf. As Jiraiya, knowing that Kasi would be his godson's, well, his godson sensei, he pulled out his newest book, which just made Kakashi's eyes light up. Because of course it did. As Jiraiya states not to underestimate Naruto, 
or that Sasuke kid. From what I understand, he is pretty tough. Though, that Sakura girl, hmm, from what I've been told, she has good chopper control, but needs a little bit of training in combat. Or at least, you need to refine her a bit more. As Kakashi asks, hmm, is that a warning or advice? Jiraiya walks off staying a little of both. Plus, you might be surprised about what they can do. I'm certainly curious about what might happen as Jiraiya disappears. And this is where we'll be leaving it off for now with the next part showing off uh, Kakashi meeting his new team and such and everyone introducing themselves properly as well as showcasing what they could do with all that said please remember to like comment and subscribe hit that notification bell and i'll see you guys later